Right, I was at the uh, the Hogfest. I think it was last year, I don't think it was this year's one, and uh, I won a Tet Mtron one to one um, Ballon kit, 500 watt Ballon kit. So let's see what, uh, oop, let's see what we've got here. The instructions. Okay. Now I did read the um, uh, a bit of this before. It's quite a good uh, quite a good idea. You can stick this on your ballon, and you can uh, you can fill in the details here. That's one to one, 500 watt, made by me. Uh, put today's date on it. I'll probably be doing that actually. And then they give you a nice clear bit of sticky plastic to actually stick over that to protect it, and then you can stick that on the ballon. And there's a little sticker telling you that you can do that. A sticker for you to write uh, on is now provided with this kit. Please write with a ballpoint pen or a permanent marker. A small clear plastic sticker is to place over the boxes you've just written in to protect it from the elements. I reckon that's a nice touch. Okay, so let's see what we've got in here. Ferrite. So there's the box. A bit of coax. We're actually going to be putting the, the 500 watts is actually going to go through this co coax. This is what's actually forming the. Uh, this is the conductor that's going in our ballon. Um, I haven't actually got 500 watts to put through it, but I'd be interested to see. Mind you, it's probably only for um, PPSSB, so peak power. You know, it's not going to be there for very long. It's only going to be instant on peak power. So it's prob probably be okay. Um, but, uh, but, okay, so let's, uh, let's tick off our bits here. Uh, Ballon box with lid. Yes, we've got that. The right ring, yes, we've got that. Coax, yep. Four cable ties, yep. Hole connector. That's that. Oh, that's only a uh, a two fastener version. But we have it. M3 12 mil bolts, two of. M3, 12 mil bolts, two of. Yep. M3 nylon nuts, two. Oh, sorry, that's going to be the M3 nylon. And the nuts. Solder tag, one. Yep. M5, 20 mil, one. That'll be that one. M5 wing nut one. What's that? Plastic button times one. That's going to be that. Five mil by twelve mil. That's what I thought with the other ones. We got those. Quarter by five eight flat washers two. M6 spring washers times two. There we go. Always good to have a list of parts that you can check off before you start building any kind of kit. Otherwise you get you get five eighths of the way through it and find there's a crucial bit missing. I'm just gonna step behind the camera for a second just to make sure that view looks all right. Just wade around in all these unpaid bills. And uh, I did read that comment uh, about the chicken carcasses. <laughs> and that's why I'm very careful not to pan the camera around. Okay, that looks all right. Now, unpack the kit, make sure it's all there according to the parts list. Bolt the connector on using the two M3 bolts and solder tag. Usually put the solder tag on the right, see figure one. So we'll look over here and there is figure one. And that's showing us uh, quite clearly how to bolt this on 
and how to orientate our solder tag. That hole in the case there is for when we put a bolt through it. That's just for our strain relief arrangement here. Uh, we'll get to that. So we'll bolt that on. Perhaps an, uh, a musical interlude might have been uh, useful. It's a nylon bolt, I'm going to have to hold that to nip that up, to stop the nut going round. Uh, actually, I'll put that one on without putting the solder tag on, haven't I? Read the instructions, CS. Good heavens, wake up, man. Okay. That's not a problem because that's got to be nipped up anyway. I'll nip that one up, actually. position once the nut is uh, not tightened onto it but it's you know it's uh, it's just putting a little bit of pressure onto it and then we can get that solder tag into position bend it into shape and then tighten the nut up that around like that and we'll just tighten the nut up before we bend it over so that uh, so if we bend it over it'll be a little bit clumsy trying to tighten the nut up put that on there just nip that up like that okay and then bend it over like that so now you can see, there we go, that looks an awful lot like figure one. So far so good. Then what does it say? Okay, so. Yes, okay. And I also did fit this so the open side of the connector is is facing upwards, so it's very easy to solder the wire to. That was luck on my part. I have to confess that I read that afterwards, but it is in the instructions, so that's a good uh, that's a very good thing to have in the instructions, and it's a very helpful tip. Okay, put the coax through the ferrite about 30 mil. Call this the bottom. You at the bottom. Put two of the cable ties over it in a cross fashion, one on each side and tighten. Wind the bone in the same fashion as the picture in figure two, four turns one way, cross over, four turns the other way, secure using the other cable ties in the same cross pattern as the first two. Okay, so 30 mil, did it say somewhere? About 30 mil, call this the bottom, all right. And there's a helpful picture here, figure two, which shows us how to wind that. So we wind it over, four turns, over, four turns, and then out, and that'll be our 30 mil there. So we'll just do that. Fortunately, a Leatherman tool has got a, uh, uh, it's got a measuring uh, thing on it, measuring scale. So 30 mil. Uh, 10. You can't see it with a cable, that's the trouble. So it's 10, 20, 30, okay. That's about that. Right, so I'll probably uh, secure that before we wind it by the look of it. So if I do that, if I do that, 
and pull it through like that. That's going to be our first turn. So yeah, I'm going to need to I'm going to need to secure that before I wind it, which may very well have been what that just said. So we've got our 30 mil there. Yeah, it's not very easy to work with this coax. It's that very difficult to get hold of type cable. It's like um, it wants to run through your hands all the time. There we go, put one of the cable ties on. Another one on, and the shown as being in a cross pattern. So that one will come across like that. And when you think about it, it sort of makes sense. Okay, so. We are securing our cable. It's actually shown as being secured at the top, isn't it? Uh, fiddle faddle. Hopefully I've got another small cable tie somewhere. So that comes over there. You need three hands to do this, Mr. Entron. Okay, that comes through there like that. And we want to hold that on top of there. That's the object of the exercise. So that has to be on the top. Sounds like a James Bond character, doesn't it? On a top. On the top, yes, on a top. There we go. So you secure that on a top. Like that. Actually, one seems to be holding that perfectly adequately. I think I'll worry about the other one. That's probably helped me out. But I've probably got one or two of these small cable ties kicking around the place somewhere. Um, right, so now we have our four turns. Yeah, this is unfriendly stuff to wind. There's one, almost. There's two. This is riveting stuff, but uh, try and remain focused. <laughs> there we go. So there's there's our four turns on that side. Now it comes across. And as we can see by the picture, it goes under, and then four turns, four turns on the other side. So it's going to come diagonally across like that. Take the kink out of it, I'll just put in it. Shut that up a little bit nicer. There we go. Like that. Now it goes over the top like that. That's one. I'm grunting like I'm putting some effort into this, but I'm not really force of habit. Lifting up a cup of tea requires effort and a grunt when I'm doing that. There you go. Don't want to kink that really. So that's one, two, three. So we've got one more turn to do. There we go. There's turn four. That's turn four. Like that. And I'll just arrange that 
bit nicer so that uh, it looks sort of similar in the picture similar to what it does in the picture rather before I put the other cable ties on so if I just move those windings along a bit like that Oops. it's probably not critical where it sits on the little loop there and that's probably about right I think that's certainly, um, and that last turn goes out the bottom. Okay, that last turn there goes out of the bottom, not over the top. Okay, well, I'll secure that, I'll secure that, and then tidy those windings up a little bit. So, let me tidy that up by putting that through there. Tie the right way around might be helpful. Yeah, pull that through there. And tie that on top again. lumpy part of it at the top. Because we're going to be gluing this. Oh, let's see, yeah, that's the bottom, isn't it? Anymore? Move that around a bit. That's it. Actually, this one will require an additional tie, I think. It should go across like that. So that is now looking you know, quite a bit like quite a bit like that. So we've got our four turns there. And it comes down there, and we've got one, two, three. We've got our four turns there. Let's space those out a little bit so that they look a little bit more like. Uh, This is very slippery. This uh, this cable is very very slippery. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and it's on the fifth one. One, two, three, four. On the fifth one, it goes across. It goes one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And on the fifth one, it comes off. That's why it looks different. <laughs> well, that's why it looks different. I'm going to turn short on this side. Oh, God, wake up, man. All right. Now, put the bloody cable ties on now, haven't I? Oh, that's a bummer. missing a turn on this side so it's one more turn like that that's better now that looks more like the picture so that's a useful tip there look at the pictures right now do I have uh, that's probably not going to be long enough, is it? No. Do I have some more cable ties? That is the question. 